Hello, YouTube friends. This is Dave broadcasting live from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, hello, YouTube friends. And we are going to be talking about the Black Magic web presenter here. And I've been using this for the last couple of weeks to broadcast every day on uh, YouTube Live. And I want to share my thoughts on it. So what we're going to do is talk about the hardware. We're going to talk about how to set it up in use, why it matters and what's wrong with it. Because there are quite a few things that I don't like about it and also why I'm still going to be keeping it and using it, even though there is a lot for black magic to work on this beast. So hope you guys will be joining me. And at the end, I will take, um, I'll check out the chats. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments there. But also, even if you're watching this on the rebroadcast, do leave uh, the comments and I will try to answer them and make up believable answers. And you'll also notice that in the description, if I have any more thoughts on it, as well as with Ma Ma Black Magic comes up with updates, then I will be posting updates. There are links to the gear as well as the full web review that are going to be in the description. So let us first of all talk about why this thing actually matters. And hello out there, you are actually watching me use live switching the Black Magic web presenter. And so I've got two cameras set up here. They are both Nikon DSLRs that are primarily still cameras, but do great video. And so with the presenter, I can use them in my live streaming. So here on Facebook as a Skype call, but let's take a look at what exactly the web presenter is. All right. And why you would even think of considering this box. So, Let's take a peek. Here we go. The first thing that I wanted to a little bit complain about was on their website. So when you go to Black Magic's website and you look up the web presenter, they come up with this beautiful picture of this gorgeous box with this LCD, the knobs and the buttons on it. And then in really tiny fine print, if you can see that, it's right over here. It says, shown with optional Teranex Mini Smart Panel. And what you actually get when you buy the Blackmagic Web Presenter is just this box. <laughs> just this box. There, there are no buttons. There's no LCD screen. Um, out of the box, there aren't even cables. There's no power cable. There's no USB cable. There's just a little Ziploc bag with the little rubber feet. That's all they give you. And so they're really stingy for 500 US dollars. I was expecting for them to give me like a gold shoe, like realistically, um, very disappointing that black magic didn't include that stuff. And that, you know, it's a little bit obscure that when you go to their website for the web presenter, they show it with all these options as well. Right. And so, Weird, but okay, let's get past that. But what exactly is this box and why does it matter? Well, if you have any cameras around your house that are that have an HDMI output or an SDI output for video, then you're probably wondering, oh, I wonder how I could use and leverage this camera in my computer. And if you're like me, you might have thought about, okay, let's look for HDMI um, inputs for my computer, right? And I've tried like the Elgato HD 60, which is actually meant for gaming. So that you can plug in like an Xbox one and stuff and record your game and live stream to Twitch and all that jazz. But the problem with those encoders for HDMI inputs is that um, they don't really get seen by your computer, like OBS software, which is a free software, which I'm running all of this um, off of right now, can't see the Elgato HD 60. So, no bueno. It wasn't working for me to use it as a webcam, right? So what this is actually doing is this box is kind of tricking your computer. So instead of seeing this really heavy duty stream of information, because if you're like my, my Nikons have a clean HDMI um, output signal, which is um, less compressed than if you record onto its memory, which means there's a lot of data throwing out of the, um, coming out of the HDMI cable. And if you just use like, let's say the mini recorder, um, that just puts all the data into your computer, it would actually 
use a lot of CPU power to try to stream that live, all right? Because it's got a, like for Facebook Live, the maximum um, resolution is 720p. And so it's got to dumb down the resolution. It's got to make sure it encodes it properly in H.264, whatever that is. Um, and, you know, so there's a lot of work that your CPU has to do to make this a live streaming camera. So what this box does very smartly is it kind of cloaks your camera. And it doesn't do it through software, it does it through hardware. So there's a chip inside of here, which is kind of genius because then you don't need any special drivers, you don't need to install any software. All your computer sees is a webcam. And so your DSLR, your beautiful professional video camera is just a webcam to your computer. Now, a couple of things to note. Um, they're using hardware to do this and really good hardware. If you're looking at this quality, you can judge for yourself. Um, this is what you're seeing, all right? And what it's inside this black box, the black magic black box, is Teranex quality conversion. So there's chips inside of here and there's a fan going on and it's actually working pretty hard to do this, but you can plug in pretty much any video source up to 4K, um, up to 4K 60p, and it will automatically down convert all of that and spit out through a USB 2 cable just 720p and it'll look like a webcam to your computer and so that's pretty incredible and it'll look this quality this is 1080p 60 frames a second out of my Nikons and then it's converted in this box into um, 720p let me just get this back to you guys and so you don't need to see that my bad let's get rid of the display here there we go and so this is the quality that you can get out of the lenses you already own if you have a nice camera so that's pretty awesome now this makes this totally usable with pretty much any software that you can think of so that's why this matters. So Dave, why does this matter? Because now open broadcast software, which is OBS, which is what I'm running this software on right now, or if you use, if you wanna to go to like Facebook Live, YouTube Live, if you wanna go on Skype to have a more professional image when you're doing Skype calls, this will do all of that for you because your computer just thinks it's a webcam, all right? And some other magic that it's doing. So if the computer and it, the stream signal isn't good enough and, and it says, okay, wait, I need to slow down the stream so that we have a better quality stream. It'll automatically call out to the webcam, which is really your Blackmagic box and tell it, yo, slow down. And so this will automatically slow the frame rate down to 720p five frames a second. It's super slow. So I should make a note here for anybody who wants to do live stream like this, that you should have a really good internet connection. Um, my settings right now are about 3,500 uh, megabits, I, I think on the upload. Um, and so this is why you have a good quality. If you have a worse quality internet connection and you don't have the bandwidth, then it's not gonna be able to push as much data up there into the cloud to get a good stream signal all right but yeah everything's automatic so let's take a look at also um, how easy this is to use all right so we already talked about the fact that the front panel is just a dummy panel there is nothing to control on the front panel but on the back this is where everything starts and let's take a closer look at how you set this baby up and all the hardware is really well made it's really good quality um, and there's only really three things you need to do to get started you need to plug in the power i should note there's no on off switch <laughs> and so when the power when you plug in the cable um, for the power cable it's on uh, you have to plug in your video source and so you need either a camera with a hdmi input or an sdi input and then thirdly you just plug in the usb 2 cable and remember none of the cables are included so you need to either scavenge them or buy them all right and so we've got links to the everything below if you need to purchase everything and so i happen to have most of the cables but i do not have any cameras with an sdi output so i only have cameras with hdmi outputs and if you'll notice on the back of this camera here it only has one hdmi input and one sdi input so what's a guy to do well what I did to hook up both my cameras so I could switch between the two, I actually purchased, uh, where is it now? I purchased one of these boxes, okay? So I have HDMI outputs, 
so I had to buy this top box. And that's a microconverter in HDMI to SDI. So it just converts that signal. And the nice thing about SDI cables is that they can be run for much longer lengths than HDMI cables without issue. So I bought a 25 foot cable so I can move my camera further back and not worry about loss of signal or expensive thick HDMI cables. Now, if you're the other way around and you only have cameras with SDI outputs, then you'll need to get the bottom box, which is the SDI to HDMI converter. So they're about $85 US each, so they're not expensive, but I really wish that Blackmagic would have included two HDMI inputs and two SDI inputs for this price point. Because honestly, come on, man, like you're just getting us to buy more stuff and it's more setup, all right? Um, anyways, I digress. So after you plug in these three things, you plug in the USB cable other end to your computer, and that's about as easy as it gets. It just works. And so it, you can work, work this, use this on FaceTime. You can use this in Photo Booth, although Photo Booth is only 640 pixels, so it's not very good quality. Um, you can use it in Skype. You can use it in OBS software for live streaming like this. And so the quality is exceptional. And now to get two cameras in there, even if you plugged in, if you had one HDMI in and one SDI in uh, cable, you would need to buy the optional smart panel to be able to switch between two cameras. So there's another additional cost. So unfortunately, that's gonna hit you another $85, okay? And that's gonna allow you to switch cameras just like this. So I'm gonna get rid of uh, this little display here. So I can switch between my main camera, which is right now you're seeing, and my, second, my B camera, which is on a motorized slider here. And so that's really nice, but I wish that you didn't need this smart panel to do that. Like, that's kind of silly, right? 85 bucks for one feature, which is a really good feature, but honestly, the web presenter alone is $500, so I wish they would include that feature with just one button. Okay, now, granted, let's talk about the smart panel. 85 bucks gets you what? Okay, well, I've got these buttons here, and you'll notice that it says one and two here. Let me see if, yeah, one and two. And two is green because my B camera, which you're looking at right now, is plugged into the HDMI input directly, and that is the input two. The SDI input, if I press number two, it goes back to my first camera, which I'm going through the HDMI to SDI uh, box and coming into the SDI input in the back, which they call input one, all right? Now, if I do switch to, I can just hit number two here, and I can switch between this one, and it tells me because it's glowing green, that button, then that means the second camera's active, and I press it again, it turns white, and then it goes back to my first camera. So really, you only need the one button to work, and it can switch between two cameras. And you'll notice that there's a nice fade that happens, but I should note here, and you need to make sure that both cameras in input one and two are running at a, the same resolution, and B, the same frame rate. So both of my cameras are running at 1080p at 60 frames a second, all right? And you'll notice here that on the LCD, they do give you some information. It tells you what source you're currently running, and it also gives you the frame rate and resolution, and it tells you what the output is. And so right now, my stream is running at 30 frames a second, which is really nice. And so this is the quality that you're seeing right now. now Let's go back to the smart panel here and see what it doesn't do. It does nothing else. <laughs> so really, besides having that screen that tells you a little bit, and really the picture on the screen is pretty mediocre, um, nothing else works. The, the menu buttons don't do anything. Okay, so let's go over here. Menu, nothing. Video, nothing. Audio, nothing. Uh, set does nothing. Uh, this knob does nothing. Black magic, what are you thinking? Like. Why am I buying this for $85? Like, $85? Bucks, um, uh oh, whoops, what did I just do? And now, oh darn, I just press all these buttons and now nothing works. I can't switch back to number one camera. So thanks a lot, Blackmagic. So I have no idea why it won't let me switch back. But um, yeah, they do something, I guess, the buttons, and they actually freeze the system, which is not so good. Let's try twiddling my thumbs. Oh, well, there's a fail right there. And this is uh, kind of a weird thing. I have 
been able to make this fail before when I had two different cameras going into it and they were at different frame rates. So one was pushing out 1080p 24 and the other one was pushing out 1080p 60. And then when it switched, it would have this glitch between switching. Um, so it just have a really quick black fade, not a nice fade. Um, you just switch instantly with a little glitch, a light glitch in the middle. But right now I can't unswitch it for number two. Oh, great. So anyways, um, that's not too awesome. And so my apologies, guys. We're going to keep on going with this because I do have some pros and cons to this. All right. First of all, what are the pros of this beast? I think primarily the best thing about it is it's just so easy to use. It's plug and play easy to use. Again, you just do those three things. You plug in the power, you plug in your camera, and then you plug in your USB to your computer and it just works. You can get your signal right into your computer, no problem. The quality of image I also think is spectacular. And of course, that's going to depend on the quality of your camera. And for me, I'm using Nikon D750s, which I love dearly with, you know, nice, prime lenses. And so that's going to give me a really good quality. Um, I do have some consumer cameras, which are going to be better than my FaceTime camera on my computer, but not of the quality that you're seeing right here. Now, the other thing is Blackmagic Design. They stand behind their products. They have a three-year warranty on this thing. So I'm hoping that they also have a three-year firmware update policy too, because you know what? I'd like to see them actually use these different features on the front panel instead of just lock me out like it's doing right now, which is quite sad. I'm so sad I can't switch back to my one camera. All right. Now, cons. This is not perfect, right? Um, I forgot to put the first con is the price, right? It's 500 bucks. And then you've got to add the smart panel, which is another 85. And then if you don't have two, uh, an SDI and an HDMI, but you buy a microconverter, right? Then you've got to buy the cables. So by the end of the day, this $500 is really closer to the $700 US mark to get your cameras into your computer. So, uh, you know, it would have been way better if they included the cables, you know, and if they had one button on the front instead of just a blank box that comes out of the box so that we could just switch between two different cameras without having to buy this smart panel, that would have been great. Um, let's talk about the smart panel. That's another con. You need to buy this thing, spend 85 bucks for one feature of, of video readout and buttons that don't do anything but lock up your, your front panel. <laughs> so right now it's useless to me. Oh, thank you, Black Magic. So, you know, and here's the worst part, all right? Let's talk about the worst part here. And that is the fact that the back panel, none of the audio jacks work, all right? So this has beautiful quality, like I said, in the image. But if you take a look at this here, right? We've got this microphone input. That looks like a good idea, right? And you've also got this stereo line input so you can you know, go out your headphone jacks of your computer and go in here. That sounds like a good idea too, right? Except nothing works. One, it's really noisy when I plugged in the stereo input. And two, I could not get this microphone input to work at all. I've tried four different microphones, uh, dynamic microphones as well as condenser. There's no phantom power, I don't believe. But I couldn't get a microphone to work. And because these on the front here, there's no audio settings at all or, and this knob doesn't work, um, I couldn't figure out, there's no mixing. There's no audio mixing, right? So how do you make audio work on this thing? And in the manual, it says, okay, you can plug in different audio systems and they will just automatically mix. So if you don't want your camera's audio to be heard, you have to turn off the audio at your camera. I find that terribly ridiculous. <laughs> and so it's kind of like, what? Um, makes no sense to me, right? And so, and then the fact that, okay, I did, in fact, get the stereo input to work over here, but it was noisy. There was some weird, you know, noise going in. So it just seems to automatically mix everything, even though I shut off my, my mics on my cameras, it was not good quality audio. So that's a total fail. If you think this is one box to do it all, it is not. The only thing currently that the Blackmagic web presenter is good for is to convert your camera into a clean video signal for streaming, all right? So 
on my wish list. You know, you, I already talked about, you know, it would have been great if they had two HDMI inputs and two SDI inputs, so I don't need to buy a converter, a microconverter. It would have been nice if I didn't need the smart panel to make this whole thing work by switching it. They just needed one button to let me switch between two inputs. They don't need all this fancy stuff. It would have been really nice if audio actually worked, because it doesn't, all right? So there's a lot that is not good about the Black Magic Web Presenter that I don't like. And I hope, though, that they will live up to their reputation and continue to build updates and firmware updates to make things work, not freeze up on the front panel. Um, but yeah, that is my review of the Blackmagic Web Presenter. It is the easiest way to get your quality video camera into your computer for use. But as you've seen here live today, there is failure in you know, a lot of the systems, like even the smart panel locked up on me right now, so I can't switch to my other camera. And of course, there's a lot of other pieces that you need to purchase, not just this black box to get it going because nothing is included. So that's it for my review. I'm going to go and take a look if there's any questions right now. And if not, I will be looking at the uh, comments and questions in the notes as well. There are links and everything in the description. So if you like videos like this, consider subscribing and I'll be doing more reviews just like it. So thanks for watching, God bless, and I will see you in the next video.